Good morning. It's early, um, so just please look at the coffee and, and try and uh, imagine that you have it. Um, it's really a pleasure to be here, and thanks so much to Alistair and Ed and the O'Reilly team and everybody else who's put this together. It's really uh, coming together as a great event. Um, but I wanted to talk about data and data and the people who work with data. Um, and so I'd like to say it, it's great news. The state of the data union is strong. We've never had so many people in one place who work with data, who build infrastructure for data, and who self-identify as data people or data scientists. Uh, we finally have an identity that we can all rally around, uh, whether we come from an engineering background, from a math background, from a statistics background, from a social science background, uh, or even a hacking background, especially a hacking background. So how many people in the room here are data people? Let's just see this. And if you're online, you can beep at us. <laughs> That's great. It's pretty much everybody, right? So we have a lot of stuff. We have already accomplished many things. We have borrowed, stolen, and uh, learned from many other fields. Uh, and we're in great shape. We have amazing infrastructure tools. And I know we have in this room many of the people who build those tools. Uh, but we have now the capacity to spin up clusters of nodes uh, for a trivial amount of money. You can do it at home in your underwear. Nobody has to know. And you can accomplish great things that way. We also have infrastructure for storing and managing data. And we have algorithms that can run on that infrastructure. And I love this photo because it's a woman at hacking Flickr's interestingness algorithm. Uh, by creating a photo, she knew it would attract attention. But we finally have established methods, both supervised, unsupervised, things that can deal with large amounts of data, things that can learn from small amounts of data that are well understood that we can use to solve these problems. And we have brains, by which I mean everybody here. Uh, we have a lot of people thinking about data and thinking about finding value in data and thinking about building things on data. It's not just building systems anymore, it's building things on data. And that brain power, and the power of it can't be underestimated. But all of that stuff aside, the most important thing we have now that we didn't have before is momentum. We have people paying attention and trying to put energy and money and enthusiasm into building amazing things with data. OK, so it's not a perfect world. And I do want to be slightly provocative and highlight some of our current challenges, uh, maybe get some people passionate about them so we can address them. So the first one is timeliness of data. I mean, it, we often assume that we have all of our data in a nice little package, and you can iterate through it as many times as you like, and then your result comes out at the end, and it's your high-quality result. But those of us who work in a real-time environment uh, often don't have that luxury. We need to develop systems that can handle streams of data, that can do robust analysis with only one time to see each data point, and can output that data in a way that we can use it, and can do it at volume. Um, and we're talking volume in billions and trillions of events, and perhaps even more. We need to be able to store that data in a way that we can access it, in a way that we can query it, and in a way that we can operate on it in real time. Now, I know many people have used Hadoop, and it's awesome, but the thing that, that really amazed me about it was not so much that I can run things and run them more efficiently, but that I can run them and I can get the results back before I forgot why I typed that query in the first place. And that may just be my failing brain, but I, I find that to be remarkable, and we need more systems like that. Um, and next, we need more education. There are many people who have asked, you know, how do I become a data person? And there is no clear path. There are no clear standards. And there are, no, there are many opportunities, but they're chaotic. Uh, we need to provide tools and paths for those who want to dedicate their brain power and momentum. And we need imagination. We do not need more ad optimization networks. We have all of these wonderful things, and yet uh, we use them to solve the same problems we have always solved. And we have a real opportunity now to do something a little bit better. And so let's get rid of those challenges and talk about those opportunities. And I'm going to talk about them in the context of Bitly because it is so simple. 
So at Bitly, we take really short URLs and we make them small and we take things like that and make them look like this. And then people click on those little links. It's completely trivial. But from this, we get a lot of data. And I'm going to divide it into three types of data. The first one is the narcissistic data, the stuff about me. The second one will be segments of data. And the third will be our global vision of data. So this is a graph, or it's a spatially irrelevant word cloud of things I learned about myself from tracking the bit.ly links I click on. Um, I'm clearly a nerd, but if you have this understanding of me, you're going to know what I like, and you're going to be able to recommend content for me, and you're going to be able to tell me when I need to know things, what I need to know when things are happening off in the world that I might not be following yet. And you might be able to take something like news reading um, and take a newspaper and format it in a way where I can see not just my optimal view of that news, but I can see other people's optimal view of that news. And this is a product we have coming out shortly. So the second type of data we can look at is segmenting data. So we can say, OK, we can segment the data we look at by location, by time, by topic, by keyword, um, by source of the referrers, so social data versus API-generated data. And we can find some really fun stuff. So it turns out if you click on this page, how many people here have seen this? You guys need to spend more time on the internet. Um, so if you clicked on this comic from the oatmeal, you are very likely to have clicked on this, this, and this. And you will probably find them all pretty amusing. And we can help you find that stuff. Um, and the last bit, which is a little bit more sober, is that I'd like to talk about our global data analysis this is actually a NASA-generated image. Um, it's the temperature of the oceans around the world. Um, this is free data. You can play with it and map it. And it's a particularly beautiful visualization. This is something I generated this morning. These are clicks on bit.ly links coming from Egypt, from the country of Egypt on any bit.ly link. And you can see the data here is for January 27th and January 28th. And we see a precipitous drop off from an average of around 25,000 links per hour, that's each data point here, to somewhere between 0 and 100. Um, and it continues like this up to about an hour before this talk when I finish the slide. Um, and we can see this just by you know, pictures of cats and such that people are clicking on on the internet. But we can also look at the other side and say globally, around the world, uh, who are the people, where are they? and uh, how many people are clicking on links about Egypt. And we see this graph, uh, which is much more encouraging, which shows this is UTC non-normalized by time zone. It shows you people started caring as soon as the internet got cut off in Egypt. We see a huge leap that hour. Um, and they kept caring. The interest declined a little bit over the co last couple of days. And then yesterday, there was another huge surge of interest in these topics. And if you actually take those links and you look at what they are, they are a collection of news media links. They're a collection of cell phone photos. They're a collection of uh, tweets, of Facebook posts. And we can watch these things come through our trending data stream. And we can see what's happening in the world just from people clicking on these little links. And I'll update those graphs and post them later, just if there's been a change. So now that we have all this data, we have these capacities, what can we do with it? We have this data as a window onto the world. Um, and I feel like we have this amazing opportunity to make the world a better place, to communicate, and without being idealistic, to relieve ourselves of much of the cognitive drudgery that we spend our time in. And so that's my call for everyone here. What would you do with all of this data and all of this power, and how do we work together uh, to make this happen? Thank you.